Hello everyone and welcome to my Royal Family Today Update channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. King Charles and Queen Camilla will hold a garden party in advance of the second coronation. It is the monarch's first formal trip north since his coronation. The king and queen will be joined by the Princess Royal for a garden celebration at the Palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh, ahead of their second coronation. On their first official excursion north of the border since the coronation, Charles and Camilla were greeted warmly. The king was present with the keys to the city during the ceremony of the keys on the palace forecourt. Charles and Camilla also paid a visit to the Great Tapestry of Scotland, where they saw a newly woven panel dedicated to them. The king will visit the Jubilee Gates at the entrance to Abbey Yard at Holyrood Palace today. He will be accompanied by members of the Society of High Constables of Edinburgh, who commissioned the gates to commemorate Queen Elizabeth Hughes' Platinum Jubilee. Then he'll host a garden party, a customary element of Holyrood Week, which this year honors Charles and Camilla's coronation and follows two Buckingham Palace celebrations earlier this year. At a special Thanksgiving service at Tesgiles Cathedral on Wednesday, the king will be presented with the honors of Scotland, the nation's crown jewels. The ritual will include elements of Scottish royal history that date back centuries, as well as contemporary additions such as music composed specifically for the occasion. A royal procession and a person's procession along the Royal Mile will precede the liturgy, with approximately 100 persons participating. The Stone of Destiny is also likely to be present at Wednesday's ceremony, which will be followed by a fly-past force. Queen Camilla still wears her glittering tiara from her society wedding in 1973. Queen Camilla married King Charles in 2005, but she had previously been married to Andrew Parker Bowles, whom she met in the late 1960s. If the couple had not divorced, today would have been their 50th wedding anniversary. The Cubit Shan Tara, sometimes known as the Cubit Tara, was worn by Queen Camilla on July 4, 1973, at her first wedding to Andrew Parker Bowles. This was before she was a member of the royal family, let alone the queen. Camilla's grandmother, Sonia Keppel Cubit, added the diamond sparkler to her family collection, which was subsequently passed down through her daughter Rosalind Shand. Sonia Keppel was the great-great-granddaughter of King Charles IE's great-great-grandfather, King Edward VII's mistress Alice Keppel. Camilla and Andrew exchanged vows at the Guards Chapel, Wellington Barracks, for their wedding. Andrew was 33 years old at the time, while Camilla was only 25. The bride wore a white gown with a ruffled hem and a pie-crust neckline. Camilla's stunning wedding gown was created by the British designer House Belleville Sassoon. It was considered the Society Wedding of the Year, with 800 attendees. The royals in attendance included Princess Anne, Princess Margaret and the Queen Mother. The Cubit Chantyra has been used at other weddings, notably Laura Parker Bowles in 2006 wedding to Harry Lopes. Laura, Queen Camilla's only daughter with Andrew Parker Bowles, wore a gorgeous Anna Valentine wedding gown with a V-neck and fluted sleeves. Camilla and Andrew had a son, Tom Parker Bowles, before divorcing in 1995. Queen Camilla has worn the Cubit Chantera since she married into the royal family in 2005. One of its most noteworthy outings was a ceremonial reception at the Royal Academy of Arts in June 2015. Camilla wore a white evening gown with slightly glittering elements with her symbolic tiara on this occasion. She also wore the sash, star, and yellow ribbon of the late Queen's Royal Family Order and the Royal Victorian Order. Camilla fastened her order sash with a bar brooch, in addition to her favorite diamond and pearl drop earrings and four-strand pearl choker necklace with an oval-shaped diamond clasp. She completed the look with a geometric diamond bracelet on her left hand. Camilla also wore her gold wedding band and diamond engagement ring, both given How to her Queen by the late actually Queen felt mother. about Harry and Meghan's shocking Oprah interview. The Queen's reaction to the interview is recounted in new excerpts from a book about the firm that was released this week. The Queen reportedly postponed her response to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's shocking interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2021 because she was adamant on waiting until it aired in the United Kingdom. The revelation was made in a recently updated book about life behind palace walls by Times journalist and novelist Valentine Lowe. The Queen, according to the book, wished to see the interview at the same time as the general audience in the United Kingdom. 
the author who broke the 2021 story about royal servants accusing Meghan Markle of bullying, made the accusation in a new chapter of his blockbuster 2022 book Courtiers, which was released this week. Mr. Lowe described the royal household's panicked reaction to Harry and Meghan's interview with Oprah in an excerpt published by The Times. The shocking interview aired in the United States on March 7, 2021. It was then scheduled to run in the UK the next day, leaving palace courtiers keen to begin damage control as soon as possible, according to Newsweek. A palace team had watched the interview overnight, Mr. Lowe said in the new book. Senior officials had spent the morning in conference calls debating how to respond. By 2 p.m. on Monday, a draft statement had been completed. However, much to the media's chagrin, the palace kept silent. He said that the reason for the quiet was, for once, not palace bureaucracy, but the institution's own leader, the Queen. Mr. Lowe elaborated. One insider said, one of the reasons was that the late Queen was adamant that she was going to watch the program first, and she planned to watch it with the rest of the populace on Monday evening on television network ITV. The late Queen had seen the 85-minute interview the next morning, in which Harry and Meghan discussed their disagreements with William and Kate, Charles and Camilla, the media and royal advisors. Mr. Lowe said that the senior royals debated the written statement of reaction. According to Lowe, when the Queen's courtiers recommended an open declaration admitting Harry and Meghan's claims in a spirit of reconciliation, this was met with criticism from an unexpected source, Kate, the then Duchess of Cambridge. While they were as concerned as anyone else about not getting into a tit-for-tat with Harry and Meghan, William and Kate were clear about which side of the debate they were on, he said. They wanted it toughened up a bit, he claimed, citing a palace insider. They were both of the opinion that we required something that stated that the institution did not accept much of what had been said. It is absolutely crucial. He, William, remarked, that you guys come up with the correct manner of making sure that we are declaring that this does not stand. She, Kate, was definitely on board with it. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex spoke with the US TV personality for two hours about their decision to step down as working royals. During their chat, they accused an unspecified senior member of the royal family of racism, stating there were concerns and conversations about how dark their son Archie's skin tone might be. The palace issued a statement on behalf of the late queen at the time, stating that various recollections may vary on the racism allegations. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.